What's going on, Nova? And welcome back to Cultureverse. We have another guest for you, Mr. Lewis Truckle. I say, what's up, Lewis? What's up? So, I hope you're all doing well today. And all the seniors, I hope your meetings are going good because that's when this is being uh, recorded. So, we're going to start off with a mini game that I'm calling known for for now. I'm not necessarily sure what I will figure out. I'll figure out a name for it. But basically, the point of this is we are going, I'm going to say who is the superhero and we're gonna say three two one and we say so don't say who because that's on the list we're gonna say who is the villain like who is like the villain who like you know you know what i'm saying i have no idea what you're saying okay so for example <laughs> the star wars character is vader like he is the most known luke skywalker though no yoda no Yoda's pretty known no it's like the trinity those three. Oh, i mean i guess yeah put the mic a little bit closer um, but do you get what I'm saying though? So I'm gonna say what is the superhero movie, right? I'm gonna say three, two, one. Like the what when people think superhero movie, who do they think? You know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So first off, we're gonna do who the superhero is. I got you. You gotta think about it for a second. You got your answer. All right. Three, two, one. Spider Man. Superman. Okay, that's valid. <laughs> I, I, it was either gonna be Spider Man or Superman. I feel like I feel like when you think of like a superhero, though, like Superman is just like the embodiment of like everything superhero. No, I agree. I definitely agree because I say Spider Man because he does also embody so much of what it means to be a genuine hero. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, that I definitely I that's fair. But I will say, <clears throat> like, no, I agree. I agree. Superman will probably be the superhero because, you know, he's embodiment of hope. He's the most trusted man on the planet. Because I know you've been reading the Nightwing comics. I know you enjoyed that. And I know you enjoyed seeing Superman. But, no, I no, I agree. Fair enough. All right. Here's the next one. Who is the villain? When you think villain, who do you think? Are you ready? Got your answer? Three, two, one. Darth Joker. Vader. Mm. Joker second. I don't know where you're going to Star Wars. Because Darth Vader, he's a villain. He's an antagonist. Yes, yeah. I was thinking still in the superhero vein, though. Mm-mm. Nah. But would I would say, though, that, that Vader is the most iconic. Yeah. Because, like, sure, you know Joker's left, but everybody knows Darth Vader's, like, breathing you know what i'm saying if yeah. you hear that if you don't even watch star wars you you know who that is like joker terrorizes a city and darth vader and terrorizes like <laughs> galaxies, galaxies. <laughs> i mean so i mean i feel like it's vader no doubt about it yeah i agree with that all right all right so there's two here there's the dc hero and the dc villain and then the next one is the marvel hero and the marvel villain so we're gonna start off with dc so the DC hero that people are like, when you think DC, you think of this character. Three, two, one. Batman. Batman. You already know. Yep. The GOAT himself. Vengeance. I think we already know the villain then too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. But I feel like Batman is just, he's he's Batman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I will say though, Nightwing is top five in my, like, I feel Nightwing is cool, but like he is a mainstream. Like before you told me to read the comics, like I wasn't like I knew who Nightwing was, but like mm. no one, no one's really into Nightwing. You know what I mean? That's true. It's because of the movies and everything. They kind of downplay him, you know. In the animated movies, they do better with his character. Yeah, but that's fair. I, I that's that's definitely a fair statement to make. But if you read the comics, like the ones I told you to read with Tom Taylor as the writer, so good. Yeah, dude, they were good. They're so good. Are you reading any comic right now? No, I was gonna I was gonna start reading the uh, the Batman one because I know there's there's been a lot like the war on Gotham. Gotham War. Yeah. 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 So I was gonna start reading that. Yeah, the the prelude actually came out uh, a couple days ago. Uh, I'm gonna be reading that soon. I saw it pop up yesterday, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, all right, the DC villain. I'm sure we both know. Yeah. Three, two, one. Joker. Obviously, there's no doubt about it. I there's no competition. Yeah, not really. Like he's just 
he's so recognizable yeah no matter like even if you're not into superheroes like everybody knows who the joker is no i agree and there's close anything that would come close second if anything is like Luthor. i feel like i mean maybe i don't know i feel like i don't really think there is a close second like at all yeah i don't know that's the closest you would get i feel like though you know what i'm saying yeah like that's that's honestly just how it is all right, all right. Let's move on to the let's move on to the Marvel one. The Marvel hero. I think we might we're probably gonna have the same answer. Three, no. two, one. Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. I uh, I like DC more than Marvel, but well, a fair amount. But at the same time, I still have the same love for Marvel. But Spider Man is just like that guy. Yeah. You know, reading all his comics, seeing. Um, like, he's just so relatable. Yeah, absolutely. Character. Yeah, exactly. And although I think Toby's movies are overrated, <laughs> the second movie signified when he was like holding the train and his mask came off and everything. Listen, that he didn't care what people like that people saw him as long as they were being safe. You know, he's putting himself in jeopardy to save these other people. I like that a lot because I feel that's like probably one of the best representational moments for Spider Man. My favorite scene with Spider-Man, though, is No Way Home when um, Tom was fighting Green Goblin and he was he was mad, like he was really mad. And he jumped up and punched a dent into the copper shield. I like that moment a lot because I read a lot of the comics and like that is Spider-Man when he's mad. Like you can tell the difference. He put a dent in copper because he was like angry. He does that a lot in the comics, or not a lot, but he does that in the comics, and you see he like hold, does not hold back as much. You know, like. like and, there's that one comic run, I think it's Doc Ock. Yeah, Superior Spider-Man, Spider I was Spider just about yeah. to say that, yo. <laughs> like the like, first fight, he has no idea that Spider-Man's been holding back the entire time, so he just yep. like punches the jaw. Of yep, of a scorpion. Yeah. Um, But it, it, I love that. <clears throat> I And I like that moment a lot with Superior Spider-Man. He's actually my favorite Spider-Man because he does grow a lot as a character, which I do like a lot. You know, Dr. Octavius, he just has a lot of character development with his character. I like that a lot. Um, the Marvel villain, though. Oh, I, I think I got my answer. Yeah, yeah. All right, three, two, one, Dr. Doom. Mm. I feel like if you only watched the movie, the MCU, Thanos would be the answer. But I guess, yeah, I feel like Doctor Doom isn't like like unless you're into Fantastic Four and all that, he's not like <coughs> mainstream. I no, I, he's he's pretty mainstream. Yeah. I would say because me personally, I was um, exposed to Doctor Doom when Suicide Squad came out, or not Suicide. What, what am I talking about? Um, Superhero Squad. Right? No, superhero, superhero squad. squad. I don't know. Yeah. Uh Doctor Doom was the main villain that because originally he was mainly an Iron Man villain and then he kind of just became a Fantastic Four villain. And Fantastic Four uh as well that gave some exposure to him, but in the comics he is more popular than Thanos, I would say. When he was like the god Doctor Doom, he literally grabbed Thanos. Yeah, I he saw that. put his hand through his heart and just disintegrated him. Like he's so cool. That's actually one of my wallpapers. I, I love that a lot. And Doctor Doom, he's like a big thing. He's really smart. <clears throat> he's really strong. And you know, he's literally also just a man in a suit, but really intelligent. That's really all it. Um, but I would I would say personally I would think Doctor Doom more than Thanos, but I can see Thanos definitely is an argument. You could definitely put that up for debate. I agree with that one. Okay, so these are a bit tougher. The 90s movie. I have my answer. Wait, hold up. I got to look up, see if something's 90s. <laughs> what are you thinking? Do you think you might have an answer? Yeah, maybe. Let's put. Let's do it. Let's hold just do it. Hold up. All right, you're looking it up? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say a wrong answer. All right. Uh, yeah, whatever. All right, three, two, one. Scream. Some Star Wars movie. Which one? I don't know. I don't know which one came out in the nineties. A New Hope. Well, no, those were eighties. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking one of the later ones, probably. Mm -hmm. what, um, what did you 
I say Scream. Scream? I feel like it's such a... Horror is kind of a niche audience, though. I guess. But then again, though, it was a huge cornerstone for horror, though. You know what I'm saying? You're definitely right. <clears throat> but a lot of the time... <clears throat> excuse me. A lot of the time when you think... 90s there's obviously back to the future there's scream there's i think footloose came out in the 90s all of these movies they definitely oh phantom menace came out in 99 yeah that's probably it um i feel like scream was a huge one although it is a niche audience yes. like i feel like everybody I, I feel like the majority of people that know about <laughs> scream haven't seen the movie though yeah that but that's but like, that's exactly what like i mean a, I guess he became like an icon. I guess like even if you haven't seen the movie, like yeah. everybody knows who Scream is. Exactly. Like I, I can't say I've ever watched a Scream movie, but I know who Scream is. I've seen the majority of them. The only good one was the first. The only good quote unquote one was the first one. It the movie was not good. It it's like it was good for its time, but watching it now, it's not good. Like that's just fact. <laughs> yeah. It's an enjoyable movie to watch, but it's not not really that good. All right, we got two more. The PS4 ex or the PlayStation exclusive character. You guys, your answer? I got my answer. Okay, give me a second. Let me think about it. All right. All Exclusives right. character. Exclusive character. Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right, you got it? Three, two, one. Kratos. Kratos. You already <laughs> know, baby. You already know. It's probably either Kratos or Spider Man, but Kratos definitely, I think. Boy. <laughs> is, I, is, I love the God of War games. I really do. And it's just so enjoyable. I like I like God of War four. I like Ragnarok. I know you haven't played those, but I'm, I'm thinking of getting a like saving up for a Steam Deck so I can like play those. But at that point, know. just get a PS five. I'm not I gonna know, lie. Like Steam Deck's more <coughs> portable. You know, if I'm going off to college, I don't want to be oh, yeah. plugging around a PS five. Yeah, no, that's fair. I can't argue with that. Uh, yeah, no, no, that's fair. That's definitely fair. You should get a. You could get a gaming laptop. I could, but like that's. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, Steam Deck isn't <laughs> Steam Deck doesn't run too well either. But like, I That's feel like a game, gaming laptop will be even worse. No. no, it's not better than a PC, but you can play a lot of games on there. Mm. Here, put you a little closer. My fault. You can like no, you can like move it up, like pull it. Yeah, there you go. My bad. There you go. Just kind of keep it here. No. All right. But um, you have you watched like the cinematic store, like the store, like the cinematics of yeah yeah like i just because i won't i really wanted to play it but i don't i don't have playstation so mm -hmm. <laughs> i just straight up like watch the movie version yeah of it on yeah TV. absolutely the story is beautiful for, I just for sat Aggie down and watched it like a movie it was really good yeah exactly i yeah it was incredible the story is really great the characters are great a lot of moments because kratos his whole thing like in his acceptance is letting go of the past and moving forward. That was all his whole thing. And like for and Ragnarok, he was realizing he was starting to kind of go back to his older self, like more rageful and just brutal. So he had to come to terms with the fact that that's not who he is anymore, but that's who he once was. And he was fixing that for his son. And I really like that. There are a lot of parallels in Ragnarok and God of War 4 that I have noticed and really enjoyed. Kratos is just, he's just that, he's just this exclusive character. Yeah, also the, the actors in that game are really yeah. good. Like, they all completely <coughs> nail it. I agree. No, hands down. Oh, you see Chris, Christopher Judge, is that what yep. his name is? Yeah, yep, dude, yep. I, I really want him to play live action Kratos. He he could do it. Too. Yeah, absolutely. He's a big dude. He's huge. He's a big dude. Um... In the, he had an interview where, do you remember in God of War 4 when he was like getting the Chaos Blades again? And then I yeah. think it was Persephone who was at the door. And when she said, you will always be a monster, Kratos says, I know. And when he says that, there's a little crack in his voice. Yeah. In an interview with Christopher Judge, he was saying that that playing Kratos was a love letter to his kids and kind of like an apology for not being the best parent. And they showed the motion capture for when they did that moment. And Christopher Judge, he shed a tear. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that was. I know. That was really He's sad. such a good actor. He really is. That was really sad to see. I was like, man, that, that sucks. But, but I mean, man, 
great great actor the guy who plays atreus sunny he has a tiktok he's so funny bro like he's he's so random it's so funny in the comics be like atreus what you doing man is is it's great it's great i love it so much all right last one he's a little too not ginger to play atreus live action though so true yeah all right last one i'm sure you'll have your answer right away the xbox exclusive character oh yeah Three, two, one. Chief. Master Chief. Yeah. It's not about He's it. He's not been doing good in recent years, though. <laughs> nah. Though, I will say, though, I liked five. I didn't like Infinite. Infinite, uh, they, they gave you too much choice for a Halo game. Yeah, no, I agree. Because we're used to the linear. Yeah. You know? I... It also just didn't release finished. Like, yeah. They, they delayed it so many times. And, and Forge like, didn't come out for, like, a year. No, It was bad. Yeah. But... I mean, the multiplayer was fine. It was all I right. I mean, it was it was just standard though. Yeah, there wasn't anything special about it. I agree. I my favorite Halo is two or three. I think it's either it's two or three. I played all of them. Those were really fun. But we should probably get to the topic since we have twenty minutes left. <laughs> okay. Anyways, that was known for, but I'm gonna change the name because it's pretty pretty bad. Topic one: Batman two if I recall correctly, has put out their initial filming date or filming frame of what they're going to start. It is going to be March 2024. That is hoping that the writer's strike is not going until then. But if it does go until then, uh, you can assume that there's going to be a pretty significant delay in production because that's what's happening with a lot of these things. What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think I saw that they said they were hoping for a 2025 release date, yeah. which, like, I don't know, it seems kind of kind of close if this writer strike thing doesn't. Yeah, you so. would really be cutting that deadline. You you would really be cutting that <clears throat> that deadline short because I say that because it's just so much going on right now. Yeah. Um, writers are joining in. Actors are joining it in. Um, like you, you go to any Netflix video that comes out recently on YouTube and you see all the comments are just like Netflix pay your writers and yeah. so it's like a, it's a huge issue. It's a, it's a big, big issue. And I really like, it's good that they're doing this. They, you know, they want more pay. They want to be treated more fairly. It's really good. It just sucks as like fans of these pop culture, like areas that we won't really get these things. But I guess in the, at the end of the day, it is for a cause that helps other people. So that is what matters most. It just sucks that, you know, we're getting this more at a possibly later date. We don't really know how long the writer strike will be going for. Yeah, it's kind of just like that necessary evil. Yeah, no, I, I very much agree. And, you know, it's great. It's really good. I'm glad they're doing this. It's just, you know, if they will really be pushing it. I don't really know how long this can really go for. It's been going on for quite some time now. Big delays. Secret Wars has been getting delayed. All the games, uh, game creators are joining in. Uh, voice actors are hey, wait, joining. Did you see all that thing about the Unity, like the big yeah. Unity scandal? Yeah. Like the download speed thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> everybody's leaving. I don't think they'll ever recover. I don't think they're no. coming back to Unity. Mm -mm. Who made? Who, what did Unity make? I know they helped with Assassin's Creed. They helped with a lot of things. Like, yeah. A lot of games are made with Unity, especially like free game, like free to play mm -hmm. games. A lot of mm -hmm. them are made with Unity. So like having to. So the whole thing with the Unity, it's uh, like scandal. They announced that you'd have to pay Unity, like the developers would pay Unity for each download on their game. Right. I think there were there were some other things. I didn't look too far into it. Mm -hmm. But so that meant I think I believe that meant that free creator, like people that create their game for free, would have to then like pay Unity, so they'd be losing money. Yeah. Which is like that's that's terrible. Yeah. That's a horrible thing. I would say that March is far away, or it's somewhat far away. It's close but far. There's a lot of time in between for things to be set right. I'm praying that things are set right so that a lot of other projects can be made the way, the time frame that they want it to be made. I'm really excited for the second one. I, I really did enjoy the first Batman. I wasn't, act one and two were good. Act three, I was kind of iffy on because I feel like they kind of deterred from the whole con like concept. Like Riddler was trying to like take out corrupt politicians and now he's trying to destroy a city. That's that's kind of like my issue. I never really thought about that before. I guess I kind of see it. I mean, it was an enjoyable movie. Like, yeah. I didn't even realize that, but like now yeah. that you bring it up. <clears throat> it's just like, it doesn't really... 
correlate to me. If someone could explain it to me, then well, I mean, yeah, he was like mentally insane though, so that <laughs> probably had something to do with it. True, I, I that is true. But then again, it's still a movie, and that not all those movies that like go into that like deeper aspect of that. So I, obviously, I don't know what happened in the screenwriting, but it was it was all right. I'm not saying it was bad. They had some good moments, like using the Venom uh, play on Bane. Probably, um, I liked. The first act was really good. I really liked like the first like, like it, it was really good. We've never really seen it before. It's like a nope. superhero movie where it's just so like grounded. I guess like it, yeah, like I guess like it probably like it couldn't happen, but like theoretically, I guess like it could. Mm -hmm. So like it's just it's interesting to see if they're gonna keep it in that like kind of if they're just gonna like keep it grounded and like realistic yeah. in the next movie. Yeah, no, I, I very much agree. I I I think they said. Clayface is gonna be. I think that was the rumor. I think. I think that would be kind of cool. Like not not a traditional Clayface, but just yeah, they can like like disguise themselves. Yeah, that, that would be pretty interesting. That'd be sweet. I would love because the whole thing is like thriller. You know, there's like darker tone to it. I would love City of Fear with Scarecrow. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be really good. I think that would fit it incredibly. I'm su I'm honestly surprised they didn't go with Hush for the first one though, because I feel like Ridley is kind of just like this goofy villain, and like they, yeah. they made him work. But I feel like Hush would have like Hush is a darker, mm -hmm. he's just like a darker Riddler. Yeah, I agree. That that definitely would have been cool. I <clears throat> I really would have enjoyed that. But there have also been, I think it's been confirmed that Rob. It's confirmed that Robin's gonna be in it. That's gonna be really cool. I'm uh, interested you know. to see what Robin it's gonna be though. Like which, uh, which one of all Dick Grayson. Robins? Do you think it's gonna be him? I'm pretty sure they said it was Dick Grayson. It's confirmed. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, I don't know who's gonna be playing him. I would. I don't really have any fan castings at the moment. I don't I'm have anyone saying, in mind. Robert Pattinson would have made a great Nightwing. I don't know. <laughs> I, I. I'm just saying. I don't think I've seen him in anything where he has that charisma. I saw him in an interview once. Really? For like an indie movie, and he was like charismatic i guess but i don't, I don't know I, i've never watched twilight like this is pretty, oh, pretty much the only thing i, ever I hate twilight i can't stand twilight it's just like I, i'm not gonna go into that tangent right now but i don't like twilight anyways i i'm really interested to see how they're gonna do it like are they gonna have him already in the movie are they gonna show him when his parents died and you know he's taking them in how much what how much of a time skip is this cuz he's still younger batman at the moment i heard it's going to be like set like right where the last movie set off so they're going to like the city's still going to be flooded and they're mm. still trying to that's what i heard i don't oh. know if that's true or not if they do that that would be interesting i agree because likely chances dick grayson's parents died in the flood I wonder if like Dick Grayson's gonna be related to like the villain of the movie. Like, do you think it's gonna be mm. separate, or do you think it's gonna be like related? Uh, like relate, like relate, like relation wise. Yeah, well, not not like like family, but I mean, like, do you think the whole oh. Dick Grayson plotline is gonna be like related, like Scarecrow or ah. Clayface or whoever like killed his parents or whatever? <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised because they changed how Bruce's parents were killed. With uh, it was. Maroni or Falcone, one or the other, but in the comics it was the Court of Owls that got his parents killed. Uh, so I would not be surprised. Thought, wasn't it always Joe Chill though? No, it wasn't. Well, at first it was Joe Chill, then it became the Court of Owls, then it became well in the Batman movie, uh, uh, whichever one was in the movie. I think it was Maroni. Well, they both were in the movie, yeah, but yeah. it was uh, Fal Falcone. Falcone. Yeah, yeah. Maroni Falcone. was like off screen. Yeah, and so that is actually. A really good question. I didn't really think about that, but that makes a lot of sense. I would like that a lot. But uh, I'm really excited, and I can't wait. You know, I'm very excited. You have any final thoughts? No. No? <clears throat> All right. Excuse me one sec. <coughs> My throat's a little messed up today. Yeah. All right. You got a taste fest? Nah, I did not, actually. Everybody's getting sick from taste fest. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, everybody's getting... Everybody's getting sick at, at the school, man. It's bad. All right. So, topic two, Overwatch. <laughs> Fun topic. I laughed so hard when I saw this. Yeah, no. Nah. Overwatch 2 got released on Steam a couple months ago. Not doing good at all, or it wasn't doing good. I haven't seen the reviews recently. They're not doing good at all. I can't imagine it changed very much. 
Uh, probably not. I think I can check right now, but I don't think it's changed. Personally, I'm not. After Overwatch One, it just got kind of stale to me. You know, like it's a fun game, but like it, when there's you have to pay for progression rather than like buying the game and then progressing. And it's just like it's just a terrible way to to manage the game. Yeah, no, I agree. The reviews are overwhelmingly negative. Isn't it? Is it still the worst rated game on Steam? Because I, I it was like instant. Like the second it got on Steam, it was like instantly the worst rated one. Uh, I'm not sure, but. A majority of people have <laughs> gave negative reviews. A lot of the time, it's trolls that are on there. That's like, they'll be like, don't dedicate yourself to this game. I've taken okay, a but ton to, of my to life. To be out fair, of the trolls are valid, though, in, in nah, the so Overwatch true. 2 sense. Absolutely. Destiny 2, you should see the Destiny 2 reviews. They're hilarious. They're like, I've committed so much time to this game. Don't do it. It's bad. Next thing you know, they have like a thousand hours on it. it it's, it's funny. But, I mean, I'm not. I'm like kind of surprised, but kind of not because it's basically like almost a copy with some different changes like 5v5, new characters. They have the PVE mode. And But they, the thing is, though, they took out like they were going to have like a full fledged campaign and they yeah. took it out for. So I'm going to go on a little rant here. All right. They gave us, I guess, like four missions. One of them was an event, so it doesn't count. So it's like three missions. Oh, we've talked about this, haven't we? Maybe. I think we have. They gave us three missions. One of them was available in its entirety four years ago in 2019 <laughs> it was completely playable so i don't know what they've been doing for the past four years but they canceled campaign just randomly out of nowhere said they couldn't do it and then so give bad. us like one of the missions that they did four years ago mm -hmm. and a couple others that apparently took them that long to make it's bad but then you see bad. they they did hero mastery too hero mastery is available for three characters right now mm -hmm. out of i don't know what is it like 50 something something like that and they had to delay it too it's so i, I don't it, understand they're not doing good you have like this huge company and it's taking them like it's just so inefficient yeah no i, I completely agree but you know i'm not really surprised this is happening it's not that great of a game to me anymore but uh Speaking of games, though, we should probably move on to the subtopic and then topic three. Only got eight minutes left. Subtopic, Elder Scrolls 6, since Xbox has taken over Bethesda, it it won't be on PS5. It won't be on PlayStation. Elder Scrolls 6 will only be an Xbox exclu exclusive, which I think is huge. Were the past ones on PlayStation? Yes. All right. Yes, they were. I'm fairly certain they were. The This is a big step for us, for Xbox players. This is a big thing we're finally getting some pretty solid exclusive starfield flopped i, th I think they've been they didn't flop it got like some it, there's two reviews like some people said it was really good and then other people said it was like mid but i didn't, I don't think i saw any that said it sucked oh no people are people it flopped now did they i'm pretty sure yeah but it definitely i played it it was all right 3.3 <laughs> out of five that's i mean it's, that's, that's not right. bad but it's like, just like kind of media well, I, I feel like people have been reviewing video games like pretty harshly lately yeah i guess that's true um but i played it it was kind of eh. It was i heard stale. it was like it was just kind of boring yeah it was <laughs> say it takes like 15 hours to get it yeah so. yeah i don't like that but i like the elder scroll games i played uh the other skyrim that was really fun. Okay, Skyrim came out 2011. They Did it had, actually? Like, yeah, I, I searched it up last night. They had nine different editions of Skyrim, and now Elder Scrolls Six isn't coming out until at least 2026. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> that's really bad. 15 years to make a game? Yeah, it's horrible. It's... Like, even it's one bad. as expansive as, like, what you'd expect Elder mm -hmm. Scrolls Six to be, like, that's... That's horrendous. Yeah, it's going to be a big game. There's going to be a lot of changes. There's going to be a lot of things going on. I think that it's going to be really fun. I can't wait. I like playing. Uh, I like the magic and the, all that and the RPG system. But that's just kind of like how I feel about that. You got any final thoughts for that? Nope. All right. Let's move on to topic three real quick. Make this quick because it's not too long of a topic. So Switch 2, the Nintendo Switch 2 is coming out. And they are saying, they're claiming... They're claiming that it's going to have the same amount of power as Xbox One and PS4. So assuming graphics, processor, all that. How do you feel about that? I mean, like, 
nobody really buys a Nintendo console for like the performance. Like you buy a yeah. Nintendo console for the library because they, they keep that stuff on lock. Oh yeah. Like the, Pokemon, the, yeah. Zelda, they do keep it on lock. They they're not giving those games up to anybody. No, like apparently Microsoft tried to buy Nintendo like way back. Yeah. <laughs> they yep. got laughed out of the room. Yup. All right. Yeah. I remember hearing that. It's. My prediction is it's going to release holiday 2024. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it's 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 an ending lineup of games right now. Yeah. I think it's going to release holiday 2024 mm -hmm. and they're going to have an open world or not open world, but like 3D Donkey Kong. That's what I'm that's what I think. <laughs> I think it's these are big claims because <laughs> the subtopic is like relating to the power and the graphics and everything. It's a big claim, but it's so, it's so bad. It's really bad. Um, cause Mortal Kombat, it looks like a 3DS game. Yeah, the you, you ever like turn up the the 3D feature just to see if the yeah, work? that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah, so like the subtopic we have Mortal Kombat being on Switch and the graphics, it does look like a 3D as <laughs> game. It, it looks horrible. Like it looks so bad. The fatalities look bad. The it, fatal it's, blows. It's not even so just bad. the quality. Like they take out the uh like the reflections and everything. The characters themselves just look so much more bland. Yeah. Know? Like the color just isn't even there. I agree. It's really, really bad. And it's just like the color's the big thing, you know, that's what I really like. The vibrance of the game I enjoy the most. I really like it. And it's it's really, really enjoyable. But I know I'm not getting Con Mortal Kombat on Switch. I, I know that for a fact. That's just fact. But I will say, I think that these are these claims that are being made could be very good for Nintendo Switch. Uh, I think that this could be great for a lot of people who do like Switch and like all the Switch games. And it will be good if, for like Zelda and all those games, you know, especially. Um, I know people have been like whining and complaining about. The Wind Waker remake. I think that they're definitely what? gonna put that. Uh, they're making a remake. Probably. Bro. That's that's what my prediction is. Yeah, no, that's people fair. have been complaining about that for years. Yeah, but you know that's that's kind of just just our thoughts on those. Got any final thoughts to get out? Nope. All right. Well, that is the end of our second episode of Culture Verse Season Two, Episode Two. I hope you all have a blessed day. Hope you have a great day, great day at work, great day at whatever sport you're doing, or just have a good day and chill out at home. I'll catch you later, Nova. <laughs>